yeah i went out this weekend um first time in a long time um to go out in a club properly and go for a rave go for a boogie go for a dance and i have to admit it was an experience it was an experience first of all i'm never traveling more than an hour to a club ever again in my entire life especially because of the area where i live in there's you know a whole bevy of clubs maybe 10 plus great clubs within a 40 minute distance of where i live so to travel an hour plus to go somewhere it's just insane i think the train journey from lost studios to my house was about or lost, to my house to lost studios about what an hour and then you add in the 20 minute walk from the station to the venue easily an hour 20 so it's definitely too far for that for that regard but sometimes for the a caliber artist or a caliber djs like Gerd Janssen you definitely do it and I guess this is a fair reflection a fair, maybe a reminder for me in general or a reminder for a lot of people whenever people are out there criticizing and getting angry annoyed at the whole business techno thing it's a hard thing to kind of wrangle with because on one side it's a bit boring because these same people get booked at all the same venues not but not good answer it's not a good example but you mean the higher echelon people right the ones that are like in the top the ones that are in the top middle bracket and top bracket those guys and girls usually get booked to the same lineups the same clubs the same festivals all the time and it can be a little bit frustrating as a fan of this music as a fan of the scene as i become a dj it can be it can feel like you know there's no way for you to kind of get up there because those people especially djing it's not like any other form of music you could do it into your 60s right into your 70s if, even if you wanted to there is no kind of age for you to retire because you know it's what it is it's kind of one of the rare evergreen musical careers so it's hard to kind of get in and people kind of, you know, um, deal a lot in personal relationships and friendships and networking. So unless you're in that hallowed little group, it's hard to kind of find your little angle to burst through. But there is no denying that the people at the top, for the most part, are there on merit. Let's just call a spade a spade. There's not a lot of people that I would probably leave my house to travel to go and see for 50 plus minutes. And God, the answer is definitely one of them. I kind of discovered him, if I'm not mistaken off the back of maybe some streams i might have watched on boiler room of him at robert johnson the acclaimed uh club in frankfurt that i went and visited in what 2010 or something right one of the best clubs in europe for sure small overlooking an amazing lake uh great setting great sound great punters in general they select the, the door really well and he was amazing in there so sort of kind of a love in there too but really eclectic DJ, great taste. He's able to play a lot of the disco-y type stuff that I'm into, a lot of the indie dance sort of tracks, but also he's able to kind of punch it up um, in a way that you don't really see a lot of people do that kind of play the music he plays, right? He kind of doesn't just stay in that pocket. You can kind of take it a bit further. Like, you know, if you ever listen to like a Tiger and Wood set, right? They're usually incredible, right? Like loads of great edits, but after like 40 minutes, you can get a little bit savvy, a little bit repetitive. But he has the ability to, to kind of take it up a notch, similar to like a, you know, if you go see a DJ Harvey play, you know, when I saw Harvey play at Bergheim, he was playing in the main room, not even a panorama bar, which is mad to think, right? And he absolutely destroyed it. And usually if you know if you know how Bergheim is, you know that the panorama bar is usually the place where people play more house and disco. And obviously Bergheim is usually more the place, you know, play the harder, uh, harder techno sort of stuff. That's where you see a lot of people in the bondage and the black and all that malarkey. And he was able to still captivate and hold that crowd's attention. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is the levels. So when you complain about these this is techno guys you have to just realize that maybe through practice because they've been able to play those stages and they've been able to play that profile club all the time but they are where they are for a reason and you know that club was completely full at love studios we went the day before to see todd turge and the crowd was far more it was far more densely packed than it was at todd turge um go and play a what a four hour set in the sort of garden foyer bit then he went into the main room for another four hours or maybe a bit longer than that and just took everybody on a bit of a journey they had great um you know lights great kind of you know installation -y kind of fabric things hanging on them or hanging off them from the roof everyone tripping balls great bar no cash just straight cards so it made things easy no queues anywhere toilets located all over the place um great ventilation most of the doors were open there's fans in each corner so when it got hot you could just kind of move over they get a bit cool and keep it moving a really really great experience i have to be honest um, i recorded a little clip that's here on my uh, twitter that i'll play for you let's play it here this is me at the front of the stage where the answer is in the main room uh playing and doing what he knows best <laughs> Thank you. 
amazing amazing experience but let's be honest as well like spending what no taking a year and a half out of raving and not being on the dance floor definitely took its toll especially by the second day my feet were banging my legs were sore brain was vibrating and i couldn't get out of there quick enough <laughs> i think we didn't even stay till the end i think we stayed until about three or something and then got an uber back home but a fairly fairly decent rave and just great to be back on the dance floor again right surrounded by random strangers sweaty rubbing shoulders you know um engaging in asinine repetitive questions and conversations about how happy you are that you're out again and you know what you've been doing and people that you like to go and see da -dee -da, -dee da it's just it's just fun no one can deny it. like i said there's no as much as as great as streams are i think streams are decent because they've leveled the playing field especially for somebody like myself who's kind of trying to break in and get my way in obviously i've got an ability to record a set upload it onto youtube where everyone's got their same set so I'm, 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 I'm kind of operating on the same playing field as everybody else that's great obviously but there's no replacing um being in the venue right there's no replacing kind of standing around with real people and hearing stuff of on the sound system it definitely goes a long way and it probably maybe the heightens your enjoyment of the tracks for sure he played a lot of good tu new tunes that will we'll definitely end up getting tune id'd on a few pages later on and those tunes definitely sound a lot better when you're in the club because he's playing it at Pacific tempo. He's playing it with, you know, Pacific maybe channels. Oh, sorry, Pacific, um, um, you know, um, maybe the bass is higher, the mids are lower, whatever, right? He's done something in the actual venue that makes it sound different as it comes through the, the main system and speakers. It just sounds a little bit different. So you end up kind of liking tunes a lot more that you probably wouldn't like if you just listened to them on your AirPod speakers or through your laptop speakers, whatever. It's just not, doesn't hit, hit the same. But yeah, um, for sure, the 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 experience or the kind of you know the experience that we've all had for being out of raves for the last year and a half is definitely um taking its toll and i think more so because of the lack of routine not routine repetitiveness of it right like for the most part i would be going out what every thursday and saturday mostly mostly to dj myself but also to kind of go out for enjoyment's sake so i was getting that practice of being on my feet being outdoors having a couple of drinks, having a dance and going home sort of vibing and kind of doing it again. And when you've not been doing it for a year and a half, it's hard to get back into it, which is why I understand and sympathize with people who just kind of move on and don't want to get back into it. Because once you move on and you fill your time with other things, it's hard to kind of justify going into a club surrounded by people that are super drunk or super high. It just doesn't make any sense. So you have to have the temperament and the willingness to go and do it in the first place to subject to get yourself to it. Um, the people around me or the people around us for the most part were definitely off their faces. It was definitely interesting to see that for the most most part the crowd that we were we were surrounded by i would say maybe 40 maybe 30 percent of people knew who was playing most of the people just came for had to have a knees up and have a bit of a dance which is completely understandable but it definitely went to show that maybe the first maybe towards the end of the year we'll probably see a lot more people going pacific for nights but people are still sort of just getting there or scratching their sort of like need to go out itch first as opposed to kind of going and following certain people who they're going to play and usually maybe it's also another reflection of the fact that the people that do go to follow pacific djs are usually tourists and foreigners and without them you know there isn't that same sort of crowd that exists but still i enjoyed it i thought it was a fairly decent um event labyrinth put it on great production um always kind of well done i think we went to see tricks play a labyrinth event at mixed garage a few months ago and that was all that was before lockdown maybe i think i'm not too sure when that was but that was incredible and this was equally as good great production especially because good played outside for a little bit on the system was a little bit more limited a little bit more lower sound wise but definitely um up there still in terms of how they produced and put it together security guards were fairly on point everything was really well done they had you know um ladies kind of going around and making sure they're picking up glasses and cups so there wasn't a lot of pile up of rubbish everywhere that was all done and for the most part everyone was on a great good behavior there's a few people being naughty on the dance floor but for the most part everyone knew what to kind of do and i think it made for a good crowd so definitely one of the most uh definitely one of the better nights i've been to anyway as a, uh, as a post lockdown event so definitely something that i was excited to go to and i can't wait to go to more man it's great to be back on the dance floor big up labyrinth big up gerd jansen and everybody that i bumped into over there definitely a good night